Sorry. Not him. It's Dmitri Mendeleev. Dmitri Mendeleev is known as the father of the periodic table. And this is why Dmitri Mendeleev is known as the father of the periodic table. He's the one that started us off on the track to get to where we are today. The reason I'm going through all this with you and not writing it on the board and making it fair game for you to have to know it is I can pull my phone out, ask Google, and she can give it to me like that. So it's a bunch of dumb information for me to have to use. Memorize. Memorize. But Dmitry Mendeleev was the father of this. This is why he gets credit for it. There was a time where we paid, people were going back and forth. Did you set the periodic table off on atomic number or atomic mass? And a lot of people were doing average atomic mass. Well, Mendeleev realized something. If he set his periodic table up with this, there wasn't no trends to it. But if he grouped things up, certain elements acted certain ways. They all followed through with certain fashions. They would do certain things. And all of them acted the same. So he started grouping it up like this, and this is the really cool thing that happened. Whenever he did this, he put blank spots. This is why Mendeleev receives credit for this. He put blank spots on his periodic table and predicted the existence of elements before they were ever identified. Here's the cool thing. He not only predicted the existence of those elements, he predicted their properties. Oh my God. He predicted their density, melting points, boiling points. He predicted so many of these properties. It's like the hardest algebra you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> he looked and told you about the element without ever holding it in his hand. He got so much that if you look on your periodic table and you look below aluminum, you see gallium. Next to gallium, you see germanium. These were blanks. Where's aluminum? Number 13. So, he predicted the existence of them, and what he would call them was echo aluminum, which meant one off aluminum. Whenever he named it echo aluminum, he predicted the properties for it. Later on down the road, there was a French scientist, a French chemist, that came up and actually found Gallium. Uh, about that time is based off reactivity. So, whenever he did this, that guy goes to name it and tell you all about it. Mendeleev steps up and says, Whoa, you didn't discover it. I did. It's like, well, what do you mean? He, he discovered it. said, I predicted his existence. I know the properties. Here's the cool thing. Mendeleev never held it in his hand. He never touched it. He never got it out of the reaction. He could tell you more about that element and was more accurate, even to today's standards, with the accuracy and precision we have than the French scientist that actually held it in his hand. He predicted the existence of multiple elements. So you get this big, huge problem. Uh, he starts organizing his periodic table based off of atomic numbers because of the trends. Going from those atomic numbers, we had a problem. You couldn't tell why. You couldn't make reason out to why. He couldn't explain the why. Then comes a British scientist, Henry Mosley. Henry Mosley is the one that finally was able to explain periodicity to us. And he's the one that created and developed the periodic law. The periodic law talks about the physical, chemical properties of elements and how they follow certain trends. A perfect example of this is the first column. The first column is called the alkali metals. The alkali metals are really cool. Every guy in this room, we love the alkali metals. Why? Because you start with lithium and put it in some water and it'll fizz and bubble around. It's really cool. You move down, you go to sodium. 
sodium fizzes and eventually releases hydrogen gas and it ignites. And then we have bubbly fizz that has fire involved. Then you get to potassium, it bubbles, fizzes, burns, and explodes. Then it gets really fun because then you get to rubidium and it's just like big bull. Then you get cesium and it's like holy smokes, what a boom. And then that's it because francium, francium, however you want to call it, ends up that it has a half life of 22 minutes, so we can't get enough of it synthesized out for us to throw in water to get the biggest boom that you probably could get out of an element. Very sad. But here's the thing I want to get into. There are certain trends on the periodic table. These are not my favorite things to talk about, but I want to talk about them and get them to you because they help you with understanding things throughout chemistry. So this is where we're picking up. Trends of the periodic table. So as you look at this, the first trend on the periodic table we're going to talk about is the atomic radius. <clears throat> So the atomic radius is the distance between the nucleus the distance between the middle of two nucleus, nuclei, really, of the same element. So to try and help explain this, I have this atom, I have this atom, and then you go to the halfway point, the middle of them, and this right here is the atomic radius, that middle point. So the atomic radius has trends. This is just, you're going to figure out why I really don't like So, the trend as you go down the periodic table, as you go down the periodic table, the atomic radius will increase. The reason we go down the periodic table and it will increase is because you already know this. First row, first energy level. Second row, second energy level. Third row, third energy level. Fourth row, fourth energy level. As you go down the periodic table, you are increasing in size because you're adding energy levels. As you go across the periodic table, so this is left to right on the periodic table, the atomic radius decreases.
So as you go left to right on periodic table, the atomic radius is going to decrease, and this is as to why. What's the difference between atomic number 11 and atomic number 12? Don't tell me one's sodium and one's magnesium. No does, Sherlock. I've got a periodic table too. The number of protons. <coughs> now, what are protons? Beautiful job. You know, it's like you didn't even have a break. Positively charged subatomic particles. What are electrons? Negatively charged subatomic particles. And anybody in the room saying, but I felt away. Yeah, but in this case, we're focusing on the negative and the positive charges. What do opposites do? They attract. So if I add more positive charges in, it brings them in closer. There's more of an attraction. So as we go from left to right, we're adding protons. This will attract the electrons more. Another periodic trend. Yeah. Ionization energy. And it's heartbreaking because he thinks yeah. that he's going with her. Mm -hmm. Poor guy. So ionization energy. This is the one that gets really interesting. Ionization energy is the amount of energy to remove A valence electron the person that just said what valence electrons are electrons in the outer energy level This is where it gets interesting. Now we talk about ionization energy, it's when you're going to talk about the trend, we really don't focus on the whole periodic table. We pretty much focus S block and P block. So whenever you're focusing S block and P block, please understand whenever we talk ionization energy, we are not going to talk D block because things get freaky and weird in the D block. Just remember that. So whenever we're breaking this down and we're looking, you have the trend. As you go down the periodic table, ionization energy will decrease. Reason behind this is you go down the periodic table, you increase the size. Those electrons are getting farther from the protons. So there is less attraction between those protons and electrons as you go down. So the reason as to why it will decrease as we go down, the electrons are farther away from the protons. D 
this is where it gets interesting. You have to look at it when you're saying across the periodic table. You have to break it down into more sections because there's changes. So the first one, there's two different segments we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the columns. So column 1, 2, and 13. Columns 1, 2, and 13, as you go across, so from left to right, so columns 1, 2, and 13, as you're going across, the ionization energy will increase. The reason as to why, you're adding more electrons. They're not going to worry about column 14. The second section we'll talk about is columns 15, 16, and 17. 15, 16, and 17. <clears throat> see in terms of the ionization energy. It will increase. The reason this one increases, you have more electrons. Easier, but easy to add electrons to fill octet. So what I'm saying here is easier whenever you get to that five valence electrons. Don't forget about this, okay? Because we're going to hit this up. We're going to start off bonds this week. When we start on that, we get more into this. One thing we're going to focus in on is octet. So hopefully you've heard of the octet rule before. Please tell me you've heard of the octet rule before. I'm getting a couple head nods, and I'm getting some people that's like, oh my God. That's not. Okay. Octet rule is a rule that we'll really go in depth with this week. Octet rule is all focused on everybody wants to be like the noble gases. No gases have eight valence electrons. That's where oct comes from. We're all focused in on and care about getting that full octet, getting eight electrons in the outer energy level. Whenever they do that, they focus on what's the easiest way. Columns 1, 2, and 13, it's easier for them to look and say, if I got rid of electrons, I'd have a full outer shell. So they'll get rid of them. Columns 15, 16, and 17, they have more. So it's easier for them to gain the electrons. I promise you this week it'll make more sense. Just stick with me, okay? The next one, and this is going to be the last trend I really want to hit with you guys, because there's like eight or nine trends, but really I ain't going through all those because it's going to be boring and you're going to be like, I hate Mr. Hall and I hate his class. You are familiar with this one. You've seen it before. Electronegativity. This is the big dog. I will be honest with you, this is the reason I still teach this lesson and I don't just throw it in the trash can. Electronegativity. Ready for the Mr. Hall definition on this one? You'll like this one. Electrons that are now negative charge. No. It's the pull an electron has to something. Like 
<laughs> You're flirting with me, I think. Hold on, hold on. You got three seconds. No, I'm not. Three it's seconds. Not those. The what? Okay. A number attached. It's not in the chemistry notes. It's in the baby biology notes. Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I constantly forget about that. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm just. We know oh, I don't forget about it because it's the only B I have. It just stares at me like. <laughs> okay, anyway, so a number attached to the element. Four. The pull that an atom has. On another atoms electrons. This is kind of like kind of the way to look at this is electronegativity is the number to tell you how big of a Boolean element is. So what you're going to see is certain elements are really big bullies. They're jerks. Other ones are not as big. They're nice. Some of them will kick you in until you can take the electrons. Some of them are just kind of like, hey, how you doing? So here's your trend. And as you go down the PT. They're like, what can I do? Can't take your word. Shut up, <laughs> I have that sausage in a cup. <laughs> no. When you get a side, and the you put it in a cup. They're supposed to put it on a big tray, but it's a waste of stuff. Yeah. Too much money. You know, I was supposed to work this morning, too. I was. But I set the wrong alarm. This where I was working only on Sundays. I had an alarm set to work job every Sunday. And I still clicked that one. So then I had Desiree call me this morning and said, Oh my God, why are you not getting up? And I was freaking out. <laughs> okay, she's got a periodic table. You gotta get rode up. It decreases. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Reason electronegativity decreases as you go down, you're adding energy levels. You add energy levels. Gives you a greater distance. Between the atoms. As you go across the periodic table, it increases. Why? You're adding electron, uh, protons, sorry. You add protons, which increases. Add protons, which increases um, the attraction. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, with those. With those grades, don't freak out. I will add the five points in there. I apologize to you. It was my fault, my bad. I'm so sorry, sir. So that changes it all. Congratulations, you now have the highest score. Now, today, we are. Sorry. Sorry for the disruption. Cross your fingers, we get this video to work. Yeah, they oh, <laughs> Just make sure I get the bigger than my first. I will. <laughs> so, the. Um, quiz grades, some of them weren't the greatest. That's okay. Don't freak out. I have heart attacks. One quiz. It's not the end of the world, alright? 
I am still trying to figure out what we're going to do tomorrow for lab. I'll come up with something. I can watch the yeah. Yeah. Think okay. Okay. So do you want me to wait and turn this in for a little bit? What is that? The order. There's no way I can get a check from her today. If it's due today. I can ask if I can get it early in the morning. Tomorrow. Ask you about that. I'll let you know. If so, then yes. And I will. We can make s'mores tomorrow, Mr. Uh, no, that, that, the that happens later. Wait, we're going to do it? I was just joking. We examine the chemical and physical changes within a white spongy substance. So, why yeah. would you do that? So, what we're going to look at and start on today. As the new stuff. Now, I will be honest with you. This is the one, if you're not good with mathematics, this is kind of an area for you. These involve... I thought you said say it's not an area for you. He said it's not an area for you. I said it's not an area for And then you said it's going to be easy for you. I said correct. Yeah, mathematics. It comes back later. Yeah, this is not nomenclature. This will be bond. So, within chemistry, we focused on some things. We focused in, we talked about the three subatomic particles. And pretty much everywhere we've looked so far at the beginning, we focused on those uh, protons and neutrons. And then we took a switch whenever we went to electron configurations and we went to the quantum, quantum model of the atom, excuse me. Whenever we're looking at bonds, chemical bonds, that is. Whenever we look at this, you're really breaking it down into three. Oh, that's funny. I didn't get that right. Oh my gosh, you got a pop filter right I know, that's funny. I'm nice shocked. Wow. When you look at these, these chemical bonds, you can really break them down into three, but I like to break it down into four to go on and introduce you to the four types of bonds we're going to talk about. The first one we will talk about is ionic bonds. Second, are nonpolar covalent bonds. Third, are polar covalent bonds. Can we get the fourth one? Sure. Hydrogen bonds. No. <laughs> it ain't? Wait, nope. hold on. Have we talked about it in Fort Pierce? I don't think we have. Is it a hard one or is it a common one? It's a very common Bonds? <laughs> <laughs> Metabolic pathway. <laughs> Metabolic. I've never heard of that. Bonds. He said if you want to write a check, you can tomorrow give it to me. Sweet. So you can write down whatever you want on the paper. And... Yeah. So I can figure out how much it was here. What's happening? Sorry, we're wheeling and dealing over here, people. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's some, that's some, that's some nice stuff. Yeah, bud. Yeah, I always basketball. I don't think I want it. I don't even know what basketball is. I do, but I don't really know what the shirt. Oh. Hey, you know, it's 38. Make it out the west side. Yeah. She did most of the check. And you print it out home. 
And it's got like the little like, crunchy thing on the back, like the bottom right. I forgot to tell somebody that, and I hadn't paid extra. <laughs> I don't have my money because I forgot. I didn't want to be like, hey, give me extra money. You forgot. <laughs> I will message her So these are the types of bonds that we're dealing with. Was it? I can write it down. It's going to be, I'm going to get the uh, the top left. I'm going to just do the black t shirt. That'll be a 2X. And then the long sleeve black one. Uh, no, that would be a large. My wife likes it likes it a little baggy. I understand. But she ain't that big. <laughs> I had the big one in the relationship. My wife tiny. Tiny pussy. Okay. So we got ion bonds, non polar uh, non polar covalent and polar covalent bonds. Now, whenever you're looking at these, you need to understand this is the important thing. I stress this before I get anywhere into this at all. After bonds comes nomenclature. Nomenclature is dependent off bonds. Whenever you're looking to determine how you're going to name things, you will name things based off of the chemical bond in it. Everybody got it? So we're going to see forever only? No. Because I'm going to show you the easy way and make it very, very simplistic for you. So, whenever you're looking at this, you got to ask yourself the question, why bonds form? When you look at bonds, bonds are forming for one purpose. They will lower the potential energy for So, I'm going to explain to you the differences in these bonds. 
And this is where life becomes fun and interesting. You have to be able to determine the differences between them. That's where nomenclature uses this. You have to be able to determine what type of bond is in there. Once you determine the bond, then you're ready to rock and roll. So, we'll start with ionic bonds. Ionic bonds are bonds formed. between a metal and a non-metal. This is the easiest way to determine the difference. And the older I'm getting, more I'm realizing there's this whole thing, you remember how we talked about that electronegativity trend? They will compare the differences in electronegativity, but anymore it's like this group says that if it falls in this range, it's ionic. If it falls in this range, it's ionic. Range has changed. I just get so fed up with it, and by the time I did this one year, and I'm like, man, this really works out, I'm just going to do it this way. So, you're going to determine it based off metal and non-metal. Here's the thing, here's your kicker, okay? How can you determine what is a metal and a non-metal? You have a periodic table? Metals yes, see, metals. get one out. Let the hall show you. Seven hot. metals are in the... Uh, they are in the metals. Prepare yourself. <laughs> Thirteen, column thirteen, and letters. Nope. 13. Are you ready? Uh, you're gonna love this, Mr. Hossack. You're gonna love this. Have you ever wondered what's up with the red staircase? Uh -huh. Little. Oh my God. The red staircase is there to determine the difference between metals and non-metals. Over on the left of the staircase are metals. When you go to the right of the staircase you have your non-metals. Now, <clears throat> for all purposes for this class, this is how we're going to proceed. <clears throat> as well as, <clears throat> I get a drink of water. For AP Chemistry, we're going to stick with this. So, you brave souls that are looking and saying you're going to take AP Chemistry, we're going to stay with this idea. What's to the left is a metal. Which to the right is a non-metal. For those of you that are like, man, I wish Mr. Howe had like a colored printer and I'd have a red line. If you want to, take a moment. It starts right here at column 13 and it just down, over, down, over, down, over. You just make a staircase out of it. Here's the thing. I will go ahead and tell you for whenever you get to college and you get that professor that's, you know, from the dinosaur age and is not letting some old ideas die. And whenever you get farther up, so if you decide that you're going to go get a PhD in chemistry and you've been so inspired by your high school chemistry teacher, thank you so much. I appreciate it. When you win your Nobel Prize, I'll take half your, uh, your winning prize money from that. Don't worry. Uh, that's too good of a gift for me to refuse. This right here, if they sit right there on the staircase, then they can be considered a metalloid. Metalloids have characteristics of metals and non-metals. Okay? Aluminum is a metalloid. And boron is silicon. It can be considered a metalloid. Aluminum is a metal. Oh, 
things in the side or uh, up on the staircase to the left of it? Like no, if it's on the left or the right, if it sits right on the staircase, it can be. It's not always, it just can be. It's like arsenic and Anthony and... Don't, don't say this with me. Can be. Oh, okay. <laughs> For this class... It's not. To the left, a metal. metal. To the right, non-metal. Okay. It's that simple. So this is what's taking place. Very common. Ionic bond. We're going to use it to discuss how ionic bonds form. They form. From. Gaining. And losing. Electrons. To form. Ions the ions are oppositely charged which means a strong Oh, 
Oh. It's okay. I evenly distribute them. I also How can you evenly distribute seven? You just evenly space them out. Yeah. It's, this is, it's, it's possible. I know it sounds crazy, but you, I guess we oddly distributed You didn't put them together in pairs. No. You take yeah. the circumference of the I circle gotcha. and then you divide it by seven. No, I didn't. Okay. okay. Here's the thing. All of these are based off of octet rule. We'll go into more detail on octet rule later. This is just to show you these bars coming up. So sodium. Here's the thing. If you look at sodium, you give me the electron configuration for sodium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Right? Uh -huh. The 3s1, that's that one electron right there. That's in the third energy level. They're all trying to get eight. Look at the second, second, uh, second energy level for sodium. It has two electrons in the S subshell and six in the P subshell. What's 2 plus 6? Oh my goodness. You destroyed the S8 thing. You get 8 electrons. Is it easier for sodium to just give off an electron to drop down to the second energy level where it has 8 or to pick up 7? I'm sorry. I meant... I know what I'm saying. What's the lazy thing? To do one thing or do seven things? To do the one thing. Atoms are lazy. They want to do whatever is easy. Wait, so, where'd you get the eight from? I know you can add two and six. What's the big numbers in the front? Energy level, right? This is the second energy level. This is the second energy level. How many electrons are in that second energy level? What's these exponents? Those were the number of electrons. Two and six, which means there's eight electrons in the second energy level. Well, I'm in the third energy level. But if I get rid of this one electron in that third energy level, then my outer energy level is now the second energy level which has eight, which gives it the octet. Yes? So if that was four, instead of going to three, you would just add the four, you would just add three, right? So if, like, if it was four S one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So here's what happens. Look at chlorine. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Same thing for chlorine. It has eight electrons in that second energy level. But how many does it have in the third energy level? Eight. 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 In my defense, I've been up since 4 o'clock. What's 2 plus 5? 7. It has 7 electrons. Since it has the 7 electrons, it's easier for chlorine to pick up one. So this is what will happen. Sodium, when it's sodium and chlorine get close, it just gives the electron up. And they'll come over here with chlorine. Thus forming the ions, thus forming an ionic bond. Which is where I will pick up with your tomato. And I will drink more coffee. Yeah. So that my neurons are firing better. I will drink more coffee too. So I can multitask and worry about my spelling. That's crazy, actually. You ordered it, but I have All right. I will say it's a great weekend for football. It's a great time. I'm excited. We got our top four for the college football playoffs.
The college football playoffs is on Friday, December 31st, which I looked at yesterday and I told my wife, I was like, this is great. I'll message, have a bunch of guys over, we eat some barbecue and watch games. Super Bowl is what I look forward to. We will do the Super Bowl party. In here? No, there's no. not here. <laughs> We're going to do a Super Bowl party in here. So, why can't we? We'll, we'll all dress in our favorite team attire and we'll come and sit and have those beers. Uh, I'll just dress as well. Alright, but yeah, it's exciting. I'm ready to go, and I get to smoke some stuff in my smoker. It's great. It's a win win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's mine. It's mine. Alright, so hopefully you guys have a good weekend. Some reminders for this week. First reminder is Wednesday you have your element quiz. Make sure and take some quality time and look at those elements. Okay, some of them are going to be. You already know, you've already gotten used to them. This is why I do this, my class this way. You guys are already used to a lot of them. Oxygen O, carbon C, helium H E, hydrogen H. And you've even gotten acquainted with some of the tricks. Potassium. Okay. So, <clears throat> be sure and study for that. Remember. Straight up, 50 points. There's no reason you should not get anything lower than a B. A lot of you should get an A. I literally showed you what the quiz looks like. <clears throat> anyway, so this is where we have left off. And uh, also another reminder is Friday, you have a quiz. And that's like a typical chemistry quiz. Once you learn it, don't forget it. All is fair game. So we gotta get moving on with our bonds, our chemical bonds. So I left this up here for a reason, I hadn't erased it yet, because I really like how we define, uh, how I define the formation of ionic bonds in A period, rather than, well, I like it a little more than how I said it in your class. So this is what we said, is how they form you see the metal atom will lose or give an electron or electrons to the non-metal. The non-metal will receive the electron or electrons. So this is what we're saying. So remember, all of them are looking for the opportunity to get that full octet. They want that full A. So you got sodium here. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Then we have chlorine. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. So when you look at this, this is the scenario you're really looking at. Now, if I remember right, this is where we left off. So it'll be good to pick up right here. We've got sodium. And how many valence electrons does sodium have? And remember what valence electrons is? Are those outer shell, outer energy level. How many valence electrons does sodium have? One? One? Yes. One person said one. And all the whole class, wake yourself, slap yourself around, slap high five. I don't care what you got to do. Get yourself woke up. Say, and one, Mr. Hall. One. Okay, thank you. Wow, I got like five people awake this morning. Perfect. One. So it has one. How can you tell it has one? I'm going to show you a trick here today with the periodic table. Before that, put a boom, bada bing, right here on the electron configuration. These big numbers are the energy level. So you see three is the highest one we got. And there is one here in the third energy level in the S subshell. So one. So you got sodium with one. Now, 
these elements are lazy. They're all about doing whatever they can do to get a full octet. So in this case, is it easier to get rid of one electron because look at the second energy level. Is the second energy level, does it have eight electrons? Yeah. Yeah. How we know this? Because we do math. You destroy SATs, yeah? Yeah. 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 So cool plus You get head game for nomenclature. You will destroy covalent bond nomenclature. So we got these eight electrons here. So those eight electrons are there in that second energy level. So sodium will give up one electron to form, uh, to get that full octet. Now, you look at chlorine. Chlorine's a little different. Chlorine has how many valence electrons? Seven. Seven. How'd you get seven? Two plus five is wonderful silence. Yes. Two plus five is seven. Seven electrons. So we have seven. I'm going to follow field order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven electrons. Ah, ah, ah. No question. Yeah, yes. Why did you put two on the first one and one and one and one? Because do you remember the electron thought diagram? And how the electrons were filled. There's the chemical symbol. First electron, second electron, third electron, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You go way, 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 way back in the notes. You find this. I remember. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I know do. I know do that. I catch you up on that. Okay? Scratch this from your memory. Mr. Hall will do this later. Mr. Hall apologized. He been teaching this for five years now. I use experience. I'll start and run together. Students are starting to tell me I owe. So my memory is going away. Wow. Everybody in this room could use a cup of coffee right now. Y'all are just like dead. I'm proud. What'd y'all do? Y'all stay up late to see who won the game? I mean, come on. I went to bed early. I gotta be honest, I'm in the same boat. I remember when I was young, do those kinds of things. Hey. <laughs> so chlorine has seven valence electrons. So here's the thing. Is it easier for chlorine to get rid of seven valence electrons or just pick up one valence electron? Pick up one. Just pick up one. So that's what it's looking to do. So in this case, you got sodium. Sodium is waiting on Prince Charming to come take her to the dance. You got chlorine, this is Prince Charming. That is going to take her to the dance. They go to the dance, and while they're there, they fall madly in love. It's like, let's be together forever. I never said a high school dance. Okay, even any other dance, they always go wrong. No, uh -huh, this is a wedding dance. Yeah, a wedding dance. It's just that. Random romantic. It doesn't matter. 
kitchen dances. Yeah, this is an arranged marriage. Just be quiet. That is why they yeah. will never be happy. Thanks for helping. That's why they will never be happy. You can't arrange a marriage. Arranged marriage. Well, so here's the go. Here. They don't have a choice. But he just said they fell in love. Yeah, they can fall in love with their range. So sodium gives up the electron. So here goes the electron. This is a bad character. So here's the thing that takes place. Sodium has how many protons? You can look at your periodic tables. I have to find this. I don't know. I can't read that for you, Mr. Hall. I don't understand why they're reading that for me. There's a big cavern block in my view. I'm looking for knots. You guys are not. I am still waiting to hear how many problems. I'm trying to find knots. It's over here. Number 11. Knots is 11. 11. Mr. Hall, we're getting there. You just have to give us a minute. So there's 11 protons. We can't read. <laughs> wow, you make it this far. You will destroy all other sections except the reading section. We know this far. Well, that's the only section I've passed. How many electrons does sodium normally have? Straight off the octave. When it's off the periodic table, it's neutral. Same number of protons. Same number of Eleven! <laughs> <laughs> but it fell in love at the dance. Remember? No. It's an arranged marriage. What happened to that? It fell in love at first sight. But the parents had arranged. <laughs> you watch Hallmark. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I said. hate the Hallmark movie. Whatever. It's all against Christmas. What do you mean? <laughs> she only likes. Nah, she likes Christmas. She just doesn't like to get together. Move on. <laughs> so, sodium lost an electron. Yes. Yes. So it, it no longer it. has eleven. It has. It lost its eleven. Ten. What just happened? Since it had. What? No, she wants to be. Hey, whatever you want to come up with. All right. Jesus. Help me though. I'm going to put it on my face. <laughs> they called me five times. Who called you? Wireless caller from Huntington. They call it in, you answer it. You give it to me. I never call it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't ever call again, he said. Hey, 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 <laughs> All right, so you got 11 protons, 10 electrons. You add these together, look at this. Protons are positive, and electrons are negative. So add positive 11 and negative 10. You get 1, 5, and 1. You will destroy the SAT. No. So this is what this is saying now. This has left the building. So we have sodium that now has a positive charge. Hello. The see. I should sit down here and look at this other time. Look at it's like I'm eye level with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I know you're a doctor, so I'm going to ask probably, but why is it positive? Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. That right there is the million dollar question. Because it lost an electron, which is a negative charge, which means it has one more positive charge. The negative charges, which gives a plus one overall charge. More protons mean positively protons. 
This is the way to look at it. Don't look at it as it's losing something. Look at it as less negative charge. I've never heard of a long time. It's all over here. Let's go to chlorine now, where it actually did. <laughs> okay, so let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is atomic number 17. Get your periodic tables ready. Okay, chlorine. How many protons? 17. That's crazy. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. How many electrons does chlorine normally have? 17. What? Chlorine fell madly in love. So he lost all kinds. He lost? He gained an electron. Oh, he gained it? I thought he figured he like, really lost half of his friends. That's usually what happens. That's <laughs> messed up situations. I married Mary and my life just became well, great. Well, this is high school, Mr. Anything. Paul. This is not after high school. You have a relationship. Madly in love. Fell madly in love. Yeah. High school is not madly in love. Oh, I love you. We'll spend forever this together. After two school. days of dating. A week later. I hate you. You're the devil. That's, yeah, that's, that's just everybody well, in general. I don't know anybody <laughs> whose parents are really Not love. Because it name? normally has how many? <laughs> What's his death? 17, and we added one, so 18. So we have 17 positive charges, 18 negative charges. Positive 17 plus a negative 18 gives you negative 1. So the chlorine has a negative charge. And now, what do opposites do? They attract. And they are forever joined together in holy matrimony holy under the rules of chemistry. That's a bad way to get married. Holy matrimony. <laughs> I'm not coming to your wedding if they say that. That's why they have to watch Full House. Yes. Okay. So. Sticking with this, you have to understand the difference between the two. How many people in the room like cats? I hate them, despise them, they're awful. Very nice. You will have no problem remembering this then. The sodium ion is very special. Oh. By the way, I forgot to do something. Sodium got rid of the electron that disappears. Chlorine picked up an electron, so now this changes from 5 to 6. Both of them have full octet. Well, that was something important. He knows. Thanks for stressing that to me. Well, then you won't forget. Can't wait to look at you all on Friday and be like, hey, that's something important you forgot. Yeah. I'll forget. Run it in her face. Write it on her test when she gets done. Okay. Right. You forgot. Here's the thing. Sodium, for example, that positive charge, is what we call a cation. How many of you have heard of cations before? Oh, my dear Jesus. Lord, help me. Oh. Touch me, God. You know, that's so smart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, none of us take AP bio because you all throw the same score. You keep listening. Don't take AP bio. I'm just not good at sciences anyway, so. Okay. Cations are positively charged. Ion. We can give additional information. Pretty much that's the definition of what a cation is. To add more information, I put a semicolon to make my grammar Nazis feel nice this morning. No, I was not here. Thank you, Jake. No, no, we still talk. <laughs> Even though later, we still talk. Wait. Okay, so a positively charged ion. that form from a metal ion, metal element, shouldn't do ions, not ion, yes, 
metal atom losing an electron. Slash electron. So somebody did lose more. <coughs> so here's the way to look at it. It's losing negatively ch uh, negative charges. See? Kids that wrote awful papers were all me. You thought they were multiple kids. It was my papers. He talked about. Wait, you would be very nice, you, Mr. Hall. I don't care. I'm I would tell. I'd look at him and tell him, "Get out. This is a science classroom. Who cares?" He makes our. He helps make our big though, so we should care. I don't care. <laughs> I care. All right. Now let's go to Chloe. More More correct. More correct. There we go. Let's mess grammar up really bad today. More correct. Chloride. What's your, you have a question? Yeah, it's a little bit off topic, but do you know when we're supposed to like go to home or whatever? Because everybody is in the topic. We were supposed to go home tomorrow. Oh, wait. No, today? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I knew we were supposed to do something about laptops today and then something about like decoration or something. People in the room, do not confess to anything. You have the right to remain silent. Confess to what? Okay. So you have cations and then you got anions. Now, this will help you. If you ever want to know the difference between the two, and you don't like cats, cats, if you like cats, cats are positive to you. So cations are positive. You have no idea. Just think, how does Mr. Hall... You word it as Mr. Hall and I on English. That is like all jacked up. Exactly. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking like and I on a singular by itself, so it's probably sad. I was thinking like Andy. Wow, that's neat. It's depressing. Yeah, so it's probably down. However you want to look at it, for those of you that are in the room that are, are English people, I'm using the color blue because anions are depressed. Well, then shouldn't we all be blue? Then I'll be blue. I'm going to be sad. Especially if she comes in here every day talking about a lethal breakdown. Yeah, most of us are wearing blue right now. I have blue on my shirt. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing blue. It's blinded. So, negative charge. Negative Ion. See, McCullough, Nikki, feel nice. No. Hey, it's not hey, supposed can to we make it. a dance number from a dog coming in tomorrow since he didn't sing a song today? No. Why, though? They have charged ions. Somebody's got to sing Ragnarok. That form. From. I don't need to be A non metal. Adam gaining an electron slash electron let's see Now comes the grandmaster question. Now how to null?
So whenever you're trying to determine what ion will form, I will make it simple for you. Use periodic table. Use trick. What is the trick? I'm going to give it to you. First off, metals form what? Quick, somebody tell me. Thank you. Thanks for making me run over the from my mark. And ions. How do we get the charges, though, that they're going to form? Are you ready? You have periodic table? See? Anybody need no periodic table? Awesome. I enjoy a good periodic table. Find your periodic table. Now, whenever we do this. I bet you it's fun watching these videos. So here's what you do first. Mr. Hall, no stress this enough to you. There is a section on the periodic table we know worry about when we talk about this. The section is the transition metals, which is columns 3 through 12. We no care about this section. They freaky and weird. And we stay away from them. Oh no. I know them. They weird. Didn't we teach you anything during homecoming? Yeah. So next. Columns 1, 2, and 13 through 18. Tells you everything you need to know. First, you have to get how many valence electrons they have, and this is crucial to you. It's spelled out for you. Here's your trick. You ready? In terms of valence electrons, so these are valence electrons. Taylor will be so nice. The animal will get there. Somebody will pass you one. Anybody wants a periodic table, don't worry. You just grab one. I have a whole stack. You know what? Just, just pass them out, man. Be like Oprah Winfrey. You get a periodic table. You'll get a periodic table. You'll get a periodic table. Give me one. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else want one? Yeah. Pass them over. Okay. One down. Pass it See, see, and y'all make fun of me every time I give you the gift that keeps giving back. And now everybody wants them more. You write so much on them. I don't write so much on I have wrote two words. On this one? Okay, look at my other ones. Take it back. Uh, the the service hour. Yes. These are no caring to us. We no worry about them. They are freaky and weird. They are the transition metals, and they will form. They will form bonds, but they will not form, per se, your ionic bonds you're used to. Okay. So this is all about valence electrons. How many valence electrons they have. The first column has one valence electron. 
The second column. I want to make sure you'll get this, okay? Two. Don't let this run over your head. A two valence electron. Oh, now, do we go to column three? No, because Mr. Oh, okay, he said not to. Exactly. So don't go to column three. Leave column three out of it. We go all the way to where? Column 13. I bet it has 13. Well, valence electrons. Three. Yeah, because you can't go right. Look at you. You're smart. You take the SAT, you spank it like a baby. Is this the How do you spank your children that hard? See, and y'all want y'all want me and Mary to have a kid, please. Yeah. No. Y'all shaking your heads. I I hate that I brought it up. Just stop. No. I was in at my in-laws this weekend. You can put it in a Steelers jersey and bring it to school and drink it. Yeah, but they do not sleep. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me call my wife. I'll call her. All right. Column 14. Four. Four valence electrons. I'll babysit on Sunday so you can watch the game. Fifteen? Five. Five valence electrons. Everyone's Sixteen? Six valence electrons. Seventeen? Seven valence electrons. We'll see if you have figured out the pattern. Column 18 has how many? Eight. What is every one of these elements trying to be like? What? The gases. No more gases. That's what they're trying to be like. All of our elements want to be like the noble gases. Okay, so the noble gases are like the really popular kids, and it's like, man, if I got a tattoo, I'd be cool like them. Yeah. tattoo doesn't make me cool. I know, I'm being sarcastic. I got my first Alright, listen, listen. I'm going to give it to you, okay? Uh-oh. It's based off famous electrons, but it's based off of what's easiest. Of what ions will form. So I'm going to give you the charge. The first column will form a positive one charge because it will lose one electron. Duh. I didn't get it in. 